Hey, it's your girl Janae, and welcome to this week's episode of Professionally Childish. Look, I have Mr. I Ain't Never Coming to Columbus. <laughs> Unless it's Mr. necessary. Unless necessary. Have Mr. Calvin Johnson, a.k.a. Mr. Objectively Aggressive in the house with me. There's a lot of OAs over here, but yeah, hey. Uh, Look, I know you want to drop your other OAs. Um, sure. Uh, you know, I got objectively aesthetic, objectively aggressive, objectively adorare. It's just different ways of, you know, putting my ideas and my thoughts in the world. It just helps me stay focused because uh, I'll be all over the place. But I do come to Columbus. It's just it's, it's hard for me to make it back. But funerals normally bring me back. So that's that's why I'm back. But I was able to do a couple of things, and I still got to do things after this. But no, you know, I, I appreciate you reaching out mm -hmm. and coming in and sitting with me. Um, for the people who follow us and who are friends with us, you know, we, we come together from time to time and we talk. Yes. And um, so to have you here on my platform to talk with me again, you know, it's a special treat. Mm -hmm. Um I'm going to pull you in on this conversation. You know, we have our sidebars, but okay. this is important enough to put out to the masses because, you know, we are the free thinkers of this generation. Are we? We try to be. We try to be. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so that's, that's what we're, the fun part. Right. That's the fun part. And that's what we're getting in today. Um, in recent light and things that are happening in the media, you know, I feel like it is my duty to actually talk about it. Okay. Um, I've been asked a few times, you know, what my opinion is. I was just asked today what my opinion on something was. And, um, you know, when we talk about freedom of speech and just the idea around free thinking, we know that there is a responsibility to it. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, we have to ask ourselves, are we really free? And, you know, you and I, we talk about that all the time. Um, and so... I'm burning, like you know. I'm just <laughs> this is your platform, so I'm just ready for you no, to tell me what to no, talk no, about. No, no, no. Look, like I said, so much to talk. Like about. I said, it's so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. I do, I do have some, you know, some directives and things like that. But yeah. like I said, it's so much to talk about within that. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about freedom of speech, you know, we right. we all know those of us that have have been in school and you know we we learn the Constitution and in in our rights. Mm -hmm. You know, freedom of speech is. In its design, supposed to be for us to be able to express our opinions without censorship and restraint. Um, All right, so let me let me jump in here real quick because not that I'm a, an attorney or a lawyer or anything, but I've done a little something with the law, um, at least 15 years being an Air Force paralegal. But understanding that freedom of speech comes in the in the sense that it's more for the media. You know, being able to go places, ask the hard questions, and put that out for the public to see. Just like you ever heard of things like the Freedom of Information Act? Yeah. FOIA, stuff like that, saying that we have a transparent government. And that changes with the particular parties and presidents, but the general aspect is that the First Amendment allows the media to put stuff out there. So people get that twisted, I think. Exactly. And so that's what we're talking about today. Uh -huh. And um, because I do know that you have that knowledge and then Ooh, but but you also, you know, you're open to different ideas and you're open to the to the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And so with this right here, you know, you do your sweet serenade. But today right. I'm actually going to make a bold statement in this um, and just say that freedom of speech is only free when it supports the bigger idea, it supports the narrative. And so when you go against the grain, that's when it's not so free and you're held to a to a specific responsibility. Okay. Um, so if we were to if we were to look at different situations right now, um, we're looking at Kyrie, um, we're not looking at Kanye, and without you know, I don't like to talk about people. It's it's more about the ideas. And with those particular individuals, Kyrie is now being forced. Kyrie is now being forced to um to bow down. Yeah. You know, and it's 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 ugly, right? Yeah. Because people who know what they're seeing, it's like you ever watch somebody get bullied and they twist somebody's arm and like pull them down and make them say like uncle or something like that. Exactly. That's what it looks like, but it's like anti-Semitic this, anti -Semitic, and it, we're not going to even go that right, far. Right, we're not going there. And, that, and that's not and that's definitely not my purpose for no, this. For sure. But, but it's I to do talk want, about the idea. It's to talk about but the I want idea. You to think about this real quick. 
slavery looks different nowadays. It does. Okay. Slavery has been right. brushed Don't, over. Let me tell you something. I came back to this city, and, you know, I was never a, a top top flight, you know, a football player, basketball player, anything, but my family has been about sports, and I've been playing sports in this city regardless, right? But I recognize how much you put on the line with sports, your body, and how much you have to listen to coaches, right? But sometimes these coaches can come across a lot of different ways because they can own you, right? But who actually owns you, depending on the school, depending on the organization? We're talking about the Nets right now, right? Mm -hmm. And you're under contract, and you get paid lots and lots of money to be dope and to do all those things. But when you start opening your mouth, you need to shut up and dribble. Exactly. And so... Freedom of speech lies in where you're talking about it and who you who's your master. Exactly. Okay. And and that's what I wanted to talk about today because mm-hmm. when when you talk about ownership, mm-hmm. and that's really what it boils down to. It boils down to ownership, mm-hmm. and it's the saying that we throw out there: right. "He who owns the gold mm-hmm. owns the rules." Okay. And so, you know, speaking specifically on the whole Kyrie situation, um, I saw the tweet. Mm. I saw it. He said absolutely nothing. Now, you know, it is a bold statement to drop something and then not say anything. <laughs> Somebody I know does it a lot. Um, but it gets it gets an it gets a narrative out there and whether you agree with it or not, it really doesn't matter because the conversation around it is going to make people dig a little bit deeper. Let me tell you something. People taking shots at Kyrie cuz we get it. He talks about flat earth. He, he talks about crazy things. But to understand that there is truth in craziness, regardless of what's going on. I know that a broken clock could be right twice, you know, twice a day. But the stuff that he is is saying is not all wrong. Exactly. You know? And and for the people who are going against him again, you know, when, when we talk about the Kyrie's and we talk about the Kanye's, even as a culture, we look at them sometimes and be like, yo, bro, you, you know, mm-hmm. you, you're making us look bad. Right. Um, but they are the type of people who will speak freely and be like, all right, I'm dropping it. I got to say they're my type of people. Uh, Yeah. As as ridiculous as they are. Let me tell you, like, I feel like if I didn't have any bounds, I could probably be a little ridiculous too. I would hope that I would have some reins on me, but that's what fathers and, 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 and counselors and, you know, spirit guides, these people are put in place to keep our egos in check because these things can't help but happen to a human being. Exactly. We ignore the human experience. And the reason I say that is because if you listen to Kanye or, or Kyrie, these people are moguls in their own mind, but in some sort of form in this world, they got there for a reason. And so to dismiss everything that they say is be it's bullshit because they've seen things some of us broke ass people will never exactly. See. So you can't just dismiss them. It's their perspective. Exactly. And so when and so when we talk about that perspective and we talk about what happens behind closed doors, right. like in, in Hollywood and, and things mm. like that, it's a lot of shit going on that we don't know about, you know, and like how everyone tried to play Dave Chappelle off like he was crazy. Mm. And Dave Chappelle, when he did one of his stand-ups and, and he sat down and he talked about it, and he was like, let's talk about the contract right. and let's talk about, like, the the details of the contract. Mm-hmm. He was like, when you when you sign your contract, you're the artist. Right. You have no name. Mm-hmm. You have no anything. And right. he, was, he was relaying that to Prince and why mm-hmm. Prince came back as the artist. Right. And so when, when you have situations like that, when people wise up mm-hmm. and they realize, hey, I was in a bad spot when I signed this contract— right. When when they actually get to the point to where it's like, okay, let me go back and revisit. Have you ever taken a predatory loan ever in your life? I have not, okay. but <laughs> I have see you? I've seen the terms and the mm-hmm. terms like hell nah. Mm-hmm. But when you think about it, when you're in a desperate situation, desperate situation. You, you take certain things for sure. And so you know when we look at again like going back to the Kyrie situation, mm-hmm. you know, this is just my personal opinion on it. Yes. You know, Kyrie can be labeled like you're an anti-vaxxer, you're this, you're that. But in this particular situation, he's taking a fall on something that's so much bigger than him. That's the important thing that I think people need to understand. Like back in 2020, when the pandemic first popped off, but the George Floyd, the, um, you know, Ahmaud Arbery situation was going on. And then there was question of whether the football season was going to continue, right? And I went on record and I said, I hope they cancel it. And I said, if they don't, 
I said, I hope all the black players just sit out, right? Because some were questioning whether they were going to take the vaccine. And there was just this social justice movement going on. I was like, it made sense to sit out because we control so much of that and we don't know it. Like, are you serious? I, on Sat, Okay, on Saturdays in the South is probably the most, we'll say, segregated well, we'll say desegregated. We'll say inclusive day because black and white people are coming together. Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, whatever. You 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 know how it is, right? On Sunday, the turnaround becomes the most segregated. That's what I mean. Like on church, and so you look at that in the South, and I know what happens to other places, but I, I speak of this. Why? Why do we have that? Because they'll praise us on Saturday, and then on Sunday, we become inferior because of that God complex. I'm not gonna go there. Right, but we're talking about we're talking about Jews. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Kyrie playing. We're talking about falling in line, and we're talking about there's a certain way things are supposed to look. Right. And if you fall out of line of that, they're gonna try to slap you back in. Right. And, Kyrie, and, that, and that's what's happening now. And why is it happening? Why is it happening? Because when you have access to shit that people don't and you get to see it and you don't want to play that game anymore, mm -hmm. that's why I'm retiring. Understood. That's why I just got that deep. Because I, I see it. I don't condone everything, but I see it. Right. And, 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 and I, it hurts. And I feel you 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, And so one of the things that like, um, and I'm pretty sure everybody kind of knows what's going on in the media, mm -hmm. but like when, when we go into history and in the things that happened. Mm -hmm. um, and we can speak on Kanye on this right here okay. because not, no corporate entity of his life cared when Kanye said slavery was a choice. And we all know damn well slavery was not a choice. No, it, and we, we know it wasn't a choice. We know that historically right. it wasn't mm -hmm. a choice. Correct. Now, now modern-day slavery, that's a different story. And so, right. you know, we, we right. see that. And so... You know, maybe it was a play on words to talk mm -hmm, about modern mm -hmm, day slavery. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it was. But but it, they didn't say anything. No one said a word right, about it. Right. And and it's one of those things where it's like it's OK for black people to talk about black people. Mm -hmm. It's OK for us to come out and criticize each other mm. and yeah. make a spectacle of each other. Mm -hmm. But when you and, and we talked about that, even even on my show. We talked about it. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. talked about in our communities mm -hmm. how it's okay for us to tear each other tear down. Each other down. Mm -hmm. And so when we, we talk, make a game of it, right? Actually. We make a game of it. And so when we talk about music, mm -hmm. and this is going into the whole takeoff thing, when we talk about music, we talk about the influence. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have to talk about the ownership because that's where almost every single issue that we have mm -hmm. in the black community it it comes from lack of ownership. And lack of ownership and lack of accountability, but also a lack of resources, right. a lack of guidance, a lack of um, consistency. We just, we are built from struggle. Everything we are, like you right now, I'm, I, I, you, I can't tell your whole story, but I'm sure you walk around here with a, with a pride and a joy knowing who you are, but your struggle tells a, tells a story of how you're built. Yeah. You know, and so... Being able to walk around with your story, it, uh, you caught me on a good day. And the reason I call my stuff Sunday Serenade is because it's really spiritual to me. And so when we speak on these different things like takeoff, it's so much stuff that we can talk about with, like, the music industry and this, that, and the third. But we're talking about a 28-year-old man, black, who we would say was at the top of the world and he still lost his life early because of what there are so many different conspiracy theories going on about that and it goes from illuminati to protection from jay prince to quavo setting him up to why he had a dice game to gun control to all these different things that we're talking about and that's on purpose right it's a distraction right because it's all, at the end of the day, everybody's casualty. The reason we can talk about killing black people because black people have always been on the business end of everything that's going on with the government, right? White people have been a collateral damage of that, but they've been given what I last night called the American distraction, which we've been calling the American dream. 
but it ain't wrong because a nightmare is a dream. True. Because I mean, like when, when you talk about music and you talk about the influence, I was talking about this yesterday as, as black people. And I can admit now I love some trap music. I love me a little ratchet, but how many white city girls do you see? You, you they exist. They do, but it's not mainstream. It, Give me one example. It's hard to. So you, have you seen this? Have you seen this new white girl who's doing like this, 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 like this MILF thing, right? Like she has black influence and urban influence, but she's still speaking to like white people. So she's like trans translating like blackness to white people and making it cool. And she is blowing up on TikTok, right? And I say all that to say, White city girls exist, but they are evolving, okay? And so you're going to see an evolution, or you might not see it if you don't exist in that world. Right. And so the the white city girl looks different. But the ones that look like a black city girl, oh, they exist. They're not going to get the publicity like exactly. that. And if they do, they well, who is that little girl? Who I mean, there's some girls doing little dumb videos. I'm like, yeah, they are, are, they are. And we sit there and look at them and we say, no. Those are the white city girls. But their community is not supporting them. Who is their community? (laughs) Black men and some black women, if they are benefiting from being in their camp. I mean, because it ain't about color. Sometimes, like we don't like letting people in because we don't trust people, and that's that's for sure. But shit, shit, we can't even trust black people too. Is this true or not? Until they, until. It, it becomes individual until it's not. It either benefits you or it's not. It's all about leverage. Leverage. Accountability and leverage. But you don't want to talk to people who hold you the most accountable. You don't. And so, but but if you have leverage to to get them to stop holding you accountable so much, oh, you'll deal with them. It's about leverage and accountability. So right. everything and that so, you're saying is absolutely and right. And so what we think about, though, when we talk about leverage, mm-hmm. The, the biggest asset in it is money. That's external power. External power. Right. And so this right here brings brings us right on back to Kanye. Mm-hmm. So you remember in Gold Digger? Mm-hmm. Ka- Kanye basically told his story ahead of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kanye was like, as soon as he make it, he's going to leave your ass for a white girl. Right. And what did he do? Exactly Who that. Who did he leave, though? You know, now, honestly, I'm, 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 I want to. I don't want to disagree with what you're saying. No, you can disagree. Right. You can disagree. We can say. I, I want to say, who did he leave? I feel like he left himself. Okay, but I, I just want to make sure. So the song was setting up like he was with somebody black, and then, and then went to somebody right. white. Right, but at the time, at the time, was he messing with Amber he, Rose or something? No. Or I, may, maybe that was in the transition because you know when he first came out, right. he did. He had a black girlfriend. Then he he did. True. He was messing I don't with Amber. Know who was pro, who? I don't remember him being. I remember him maybe trying to date someone black. Maybe yeah. But there was no one prominent. Right. It was no and one out became, in the forefront. It became. It was Amber Rose, and it became Kim Kardashian. Right. And Kim Kardashian was Beyonce to Jay Z and Kim and exactly and Kanye. And so, exactly who ended up exploiting. But him. you did say he told his story, but yeah. I was like, who did he leave? So past yeah. that, I was like, did he leave somebody? Past so, that, but he told he his told story. story. And so when you, when you think about that, and then you go into his relationship like with Jay Z, mm-hmm. and you know Jay Z's song spells it out which one? to a T. Which which Jay Z song? Let let let's look. All we gotta do is just think about it. Look, I'm trying. I'm trying not to get canceled here, but okay. we, but we have we have to take into account that with with the Kanyes, with the Kyries, and everything okay, else, okay. you can make it, you can make all this money, you can mm-hmm. make whatever. But at the end of the day, you're still reminded, you're okay. still a nigga. Oh, uh, okay. You yeah, still yeah, black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Kanye's okay. complex, right. especially after getting in with the Kardashian crew, mm-hmm. was I'm above it all, and that ego came in, and it was like I'm I'm above it. And that goes back to what I said earlier when I say. You need to have accountability. You need to have. You said the same thing, but I would. You you get that big, but we need to have something that reigns us in because all that power is too much to hold. It's it's too much to hold. So like I said, like even me, I feel like I'm an authentic person, but I need my dad and I need my daughter. I need things to humble me, because the human spirit is just it's it's a sponge, and when you feel that light, your confidence. You can continue to get confidence, but that's why going to church and, and knowing God is important to some people because you have to believe in something. But if you believe in yourself too much, you will start to idolize yourself 
just like Kanye. What does Kanye believe in? He believes in God, but look at look look at what God he's believing in, and look at where it has him to the point where we're questioning. Now we 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 can't say that Kanye's wrong, right? We can't. Jesus, that's we the can't. part. Like, it, but the craziest part is that you know, as a community, we sit down and we throw around those words of crazy and bipolar and this and that, and not saying that his diagnosis is not correct right. because I definitely I believe it, but. You know, we can sit around and we can have the conspiracy theories and everything. But when, when you actually talk about what he just said, mm-hmm. it was some truth in it. Absolutely. And so. I don't even know what he said and I can say it is. <laughs> look, look, I can't even post it because I, I definitely, like I said, I, I can't. I, no, I, you, you know, you're, trying, you're, you're trying your best to stay out of you know the issues. You you be skirting that line, though. You love it. Look, you know, you know I got to skirt the line. line I, I got to put, it, I gotta no, put yeah. it out there because I want people to actually think about it. And it's not saying that, it's not saying that anything is 100% correct. But when we go back and we talk about religion, and you know, you and I, we talk about religion a lot. Mm. But when, when you talk about religion and you talk about the premise of this doctrine, that was created from stories that were prior to our age, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. correct? Yes. And we are supposed to believe this to be 100% fact, but then there's other, other evidence out there that could disprove that some parts of this doctrine is incorrect. Well, we then silence listen, listen, that this, voice. This is, this is where I'm at. People are all or nothing. You know what I mean? People are lazy in thought where it has to be all or nothing, which is why they won't accept what Kanye's saying, because if he says crazy things, then he must be crazy in totality. Therefore, we can't listen to anything he says. Hey, Kyrie says flat earth up. Therefore, everything he says is wrong. And all of those are fallacies. Those are actual logical fallacies that people most people don't know. You want to know why? Because you have to take some sort of critical thinking class that's buried in some sort of college curriculum. You want to know something that Kyrie said that was the dopest? He said, reading is a superpower. Because it is. Hey, absolutely. Because there was always a running saying, cliche, colloquial, that how do you hide something from a black person? Yep, put it in a book. Boom. And it still reigns true right now. It does because... You know, it because we <laughs> we our spirits and our ancestors have struggled to the point where, first of all, nobody wants to work. That's why you always find the lazy person to do your work. Right. Because they're going to cut the corners and find the easy way. But that's both people being lazy. Right. Everybody wants to do the easy thing. Emotional thinking, cognitive ease. That's just association. That's just the way we work. Just like electricity, shortest route. So everybody's trying to use everybody. So that means everybody's trying to do everything fast. I'm not gonna go down that path, but if we're thinking about religion, everybody's gonna be using everybody and then saying, hey, it's not me saying it, it's God saying that we have to work like we have to work like right. this. And if you don't understand that, then well, you might have to die. Whoa. Well, if you start teaching people that, and then well sh- if 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 we don't do this, if we don't serve as slaves, we're going to die. And we have to appreciate serving as slaves because guess what? Guess who serves as slaves in the Bible 400 years ago, before that time? I mean, you, I mean, not 400 years, but for 400 years, they served as slaves. Mm-hmm. But then we served 400 years ago. Then you start looking at the numbers and it's like, Kyrie might not be crazy. Kanye might not be crazy. Because if you start making all these, these ties, it's like something doesn't make sense. Because we keep losing, but we just happen to look like we're winning if we're looking at certain people. But the, the people we're looking at that's winning, they're now getting beat about the head and shoulders. Right. And they're telling us everything that, that you were taught in this American dream Don't, is a lie. That's why I'm all over. It's like psychosis. And that's, that's why I sound crazy right now on your podcast all over the place because this is like no, you think about all this crazy no, stuff. No, but I mean, you don't sound crazy. And, and it even goes into, and you know, I know the whole situation like with Drake mm-hmm. right now. Ooh. And and it's funny to me because less than two months ago, people were making a joke about Drake in, in his house beat album and saying how it wasn't hitting. Mm-hmm. But now you come out and you have the shot heard around the world because, you know, it's like, oh, he's he's using wordplay at the shot against Megan. Oh, it's wordplay. It's not about her. 
specifically, but it could be, but he's really talking about this. You know, I haven't even heard this. I've heard about this. I haven't heard his music, but I've heard about he's taking shots. Right? He's taking shots at everybody. Well, well, didn't 50 Cent do that? Like a couple of Jack for Beats, and doesn't this happen from time to time? It and does. like, and, and if you want some sort of popularity, just start throwing shots at other rappers in the game. And guess what that's going to do? Stir the pot. You remember that? Right. And so it's going to stir the pot, but it, it, it makes you question because, you know, we're, we're in the era of the whole alpha and beta male type you know, situation. I know. And so here it is, this guy who was literally on social media crying about Pusha T threatening to whoop your ass. And now you coming for a woman who has come for nobody. Hey, um, I'm not going to condone. I'm going to say this. When you play baseball and you catch a, and, you, and you get hit by a line drive, it sucks. And you're playing the game, right? Like, if you're trying to slide into home plate and somebody steps on your hand on accident, on on purpose, or on, on purpose. It still hurts. It still hurts, and it's part of the game. And you don't know sometimes if it's intentional or not, but the ones that you know that are intentional and nobody else sees it, you sometimes those are part of the thing. That's part of the game, right? So what I'm saying is regardless of what's going on, this happens. People take shots at people and for popularity. And then since they just said Drake was off, cool. Drake has been a person that they said somebody has had been ghostwriting for him for years. And this man remains at the top doing something. So regardless of what's happening, Kanye, crazy as he is, stays on the network every day. Kyrie, regardless of what, still is a millionaire getting played the ball and was still ball. And he's still putting the message out there. You want to know why? Because the movie that he was talking about, I purchased. And it was a $50 movie. Right. And, and it's made, like a four-hour. I still got to watch it because I fell asleep on it before right. I had to come to Columbus. But I'm like, it made me think because I was like, hold on. Hebrews the Negro. These, this is a thing. I came up with Christianity. I have these questions about how they broke off in the Genesis and Exodus and all this other stuff. I've been reading. I've been paying attention. I don't just listen to people because they say, listen to the Bible. Then once you listen to the Bible and you look at it, then you try to figure out stuff. It's like, okay, you need to stop right there because pa- what? So when you actually try to get to a theology type level with understanding it, the people who are older than you try to cap it. And they only try to cap it through their understanding and through their age and wisdom saying that they know better. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus. And then it'll stop you there, Jesus. Like I was at, let me tell you something. I know we about to shut it down. I was at this church service for a funeral for my old neighbor. Howard Odom, rest in peace. And I had to walk out at the end, listening to that white preacher reverend talk. Because I'm just over it. Like, there's black people in there. It's mixed. But he out there on St. Mary's Road. I'm trying to sit here. I'm thinking, like, how this white preacher lasts this long right here at Pires? I'm from right over here. And I'm like, wow. And I'm listening to what he's saying about except Jesus Christ and if you don't do that it sounds like damnation I'm like wow and I had to get up and walk out of a funeral I'm over it look I'm not surprised no for real I'm not surprised at all mm. Um, that's where I'm at in life though yeah you, you know, know I'll drop the mic on anything too like I walked out of a funeral cause I don't necessarily agree with how they selling us on this and we gotta re we gotta redo this and I want to redo it and have like a black Jesus still there so we can kill, keep, keep our black people and keep our Jesus. But we had to reinvent Jesus, right? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why I'm down with it. Because I just retired and I'm about to reinvent myself again because I have to because I'm not an airman like that anymore. I'm retired. Right. You know, and I, and I think that's the thing because like, when, you know, we talk about being free and we talk about, you know, freedom. Mm-hmm. You're only, mm-hmm. as, <laughs> you're as free as your next meal. Right. And we'll For put real. it like that because because that's true. You I know, agree. no matter what, no matter what part of the spectrum you're on, you're mm-hmm. only as free as your next meal. And that's something that, look, an ode right. to Outcast because they spoke on it. Okay, talk to me. Which one? You know, I love Outcast. <laughs> so if you're quoting it, let me hear it. No, so, look. so it was actually an interview okay. that they that they were doing. And this was like in the, in the 90s. All right, all they right. were doing this interview and they were talking about how, you know, they were starving artists and mm-hmm. they were put in a situation to where they didn't get paid. 
Oh, I remember that. That's where and, elevators and all this yes, stuff came from. Yes, that- and so they were in it. They were in the situation. They weren't. They weren't getting paid, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Yo, where's my money?" Right. And the promoter didn't have the rest of the money, and so mm-hmm. they were like, "Yo, we're not going on." And so the promoter leaves, and the promoter goes, and he gets whatever money mm-hmm. that they can scrap up, mm-hmm. and they pay him. And right. so then they go on stage. Right. But the gag to it all is after they come off stage and they get this money, they get robbed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you remember? Were that? they in like St. Louis? Yeah, or something? it was something crazy. So Yo, they get didn't robbed. Didn't they do that animated? Wasn't that like an yeah. animated one? <laughs> yeah, I remember. And so that. they get robbed. Yeah. But it is a true testament to the way that we live today. Oh yeah. Because, you know, it's you like... You get robbed two ways. Two yeah, you get ways. robbed two different ways. Mm-hmm. And then you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's all it is. Exactly. It's, but but the crazy thing about it, now, let's not get twisted in all this now. Because we, we about to wrap it up. Let's not get twisted in all this. This anti-Semitic stuff, it goes deeper than that. And I'm not going to go, you know what I mean? Because I ain't trying to... But the reason that they try to put an X to that quick, boom, 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 boom. Because it goes way deeper than people... Have the time to even exactly. pay attention to. Exactly. But there are people who make money who are very, very, very focused on their craft. But when they're not just on their craft, their hobbies happen to be being able to look at things that normal people who bust their ass every day, nine to five, and got kids and shit, don't Can't get a chance at. to look at it. And exactly. then when you start telling these people crazy because they don't fall into what you normally see, Mr. Wake Up and Watch the News and Get Scared all the goddamn time. You got to cut Man, it. Man, get out of here. You got to cut it. And so, you know, like I said, we are going to wrap this one up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Um, yeah, But this right here, I was actually going to start the show with this. What's up? But I'm going to finish it. Let's do it. Um, So, you know, like I said, we we always, we sit down and we talk about this generation. Mm. Because we are, we're different. We're the we're the generation of hell no. Mm. We're the generation of you're not just going to tell me this. I'm going to research this and come back and counter this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, before Kyrie got canceled again, like I said, you know, I... It, it's not about the man. It's about the idea. Mm-hmm. But he put it out there and he actually had a quote. And he was like, every generation has its purpose. Mm-hmm. Ours is to reveal the truth mm-hmm. and to reverse the brainwashing. Yes. Yes. And yes. that's the charge that I leave with everyone. Say that. Say it. Can you say it again? Can we? we the, our generation is here to reverse the brainwashing. To reverse the brainwashing, mm. and it's by any means necessary. Talk it. Say and, it again. You know that's where we are. <laughs> hey, it's hard. And it's gonna look crazy. There's gonna be delusions. You're gonna see things. You're gonna want to go back to what you normally do. You're gonna want to go back to these bad habits. But you got to create good habits now and break. And break break the, it. What break the? Gen- I say I got my new shirt. I didn't wear it. Stop generational trauma. Exactly. And that's and that's definitely what is what is built on. Yes, ma'am. And I so, agree. you know, like I said, I usually say this, you know, we're going to stick a fork in it right now because mm-hmm. we could go on for hours on this. Yeah, yeah. But I thank you for sitting down talking to me yeah, every time. Look, much love. Every you know, time we, I come back, you know, every time I, anytime we want to. But every every time I come back, I want to do. Yeah. Definitely I said you always welcome. Sure. Um, so for my listeners, thank you for tuning in. Um, as always, you know, y'all have a great week. Somebody smile because it's hard out here. For sure. um, if you want to follow me, follow me on Professionally Childish One on Instagram. Uh, like the page. You can be my friend. I'm Janae Nicole. And also, look, put this plug in. Check my man out okay. at Objectively Aggressive Podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, he has the Lighthouse series. Yeah, what else are you doing? Oh, my God. In my head, a lot, but actually, right now, um, just doing a lighthouse series. Uh, I, I I like to do our thing. I put ours on there. I have my little segments that I'm doing. Um, you know, I'm trying to transition with this retirement thing right now, so that's that's enough. But if you go to oaperspective.com, you can check out. Get to my um, my YouTube. You can get to my Instagram. You can get to my Facebook. Whatever. And if you go to oa by kj.com, you can get some of this um, Adorare gear. We show your reverence because we we really about this life that we talking about. You know exactly.